Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. So I can't be the only one who thinks that the charts are a little bit unstable right now, am I? Now that the summer lull has faded for good, we might not have gotten that many new songs this week, but it doesn't shake the feeling that it's only a matter of time before everything's gonna get thrown into chaos. Keep in mind that we still have a solid 14 weeks left of the Billboard year. There are songs that could debut in the next couple weeks that could make that year-end list, and if they debut higher on the charts, they'll need even less time. And really, the time is ripe for some of those debuts, because we got a pretty weak top 10 right now. Sure, cheap thrills, by Sia featuring Sean Paul as the top spot for another week, somehow. Thanks to dominating airplay and solid enough sales and streaming, but it's not incredibly dominant in either sales or streaming. One Dance by Drake featuring Kyle and Wizkid went back to number two thanks to streaming dominance, even as both sales and airplay have continued to fall off. And This Is What You Came For by Calvin Harris featuring Rihanna isn't that far behind thanks to massive YouTube and airplay, although sales and streaming took some considerable hits. The big sales leader continues to be Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake at number four. And sure, it continues to have lousy streaming, and airplay is declining, but it isn't quite declining as fast as some of its competition, which is pretty interesting. Then we have what I thought would be a serious contender for number one this week, Cold Water by Major Lazer featuring Justin Bieber and Mia, but it actually slid back to number five as it was muscled back on sales and streaming, and while it's got YouTube traction, it didn't quite pick up enough airplay fast enough to keep it from falling back. It didn't fall harder because Don't Let Me Down by the Chainsmokers featuring Day is starting to lose traction in its own right, holding at number six thanks to a slight YouTube boost to balance out against weakening sales, airplay, and streaming. Then we've got Ride by 21 Pilots at number 7. I don't know if the song is just stable or just can't get any momentum, because it was mostly static on airplay and sales, only slipping a little bit on streaming, and yet it was just enough to hold back Needed Me by Rihanna at number 8, which also spent the week in airplay limbo, with its streaming still compensating for its crap sales, although I wouldn't rely on that for much longer. And a lot of that is because of our new top 10 entry this week at number 9, Close Served by the Chainsmokers featuring Halsey. I'll get into the song proper much later, but let's just say it's here because of extremely dominant sales and a lot of streaming, with even a bit of YouTube trying to compensate for radio struggling to catch up, and yet I'm not seeing a lot of radio momentum yet, so I'm not sure how long it's gonna last in the top 10. Finally, we've got Send My Love to Your New Lover by Adele pushed back to number 10. It might have happened anyway thanks to rough sales and even worse streaming, but it somehow still has radio momentum, and I don't see it dropping out unless that slows down. But on that note, let's consider our losers and dropouts, and the only one in the latter category that anybody's gonna care about is Lighted Up by Major Lazer featuring Nyla, which never got higher than 73 on the Hot 100, but still lasted a full 20 weeks on the charts. The losers are a much more interesting story, mostly because there's a lot of them. First you got the complete non-starters, like Vice by Miranda Lambert continuing down to 71, Make Me by Britney Spears featuring G-Eazy follows the ridiculous video down to 67, and Purple Lamborghini by Skrillex and Rick Ross crashed into a brick wall at 90. Compared to the other Suicide Squad tracks, that's not a good sign. Then you have the case where the momentum has just abruptly run out, providing it was there to begin with. Wherever I Go by One Republic continues its downward slide to 91. That Part by Schoolboy Q and Kanye West is abruptly stopped at 51. And The Bad Week for Kanye continues as Famous featuring Rihanna and Swiss Beast tumbles hard down to 89. And last of all, we got the songs that are reaching the end of their cycles naturally, and they're gonna be gone pretty soon. Dangerous Woman by Ariana Ariana Grande fell down to 48, Close by Nick Jonas featuring Tovlo dropped away to 64, and All the Way Up by Fat Joe, Remy Ma, and French Montana went all the way down to 65. But don't worry, fan of French Montana, he's easily one of the two big stories when it comes to our gains and returning entries this week, because thanks to the video, he and Drake took no shopping up to 36. Okay, at some point, can somebody just ether Drake and be done with it? Kendrick, Eminem, I don't care who at this point, because this is getting past the point of overexposure, and now it's just getting obnoxious, especially with every single lazy guest verse that Drake seems to be getting worse. Thankfully, most of the rest of our gains are a lot more tolerable, with probably the worst being Sucker for Pain by Lil Wayne and his posse, which got the boost from Suicide Squad. Outside of that, well, Father Stretch My Hands Part 1 by Kanye and Kid Cudi got a bit of a boost to 83 off the re-entry, American Country Love Song by Jake Owen picks up momentum after his album dropped up to 56, and This Girl by Kungs vs. Coconut 3 Burners got a welcome boost up to 
77 off its debut, which is a good sign. Most welcome at all, Lush Life by Zara Larson came back bigger than ever to 75. Might be a tad too late to gain much momentum during the summer, as I'm not seeing a lot of traction on the radio, but hey, we can hope, right? The song's really good. And since we've got another sparse week of new arrivals, so in the spirit of two previous world hits doing pretty well, let's break out another, shall we? Take off your clothes, blow up the fire Don't be so shy, you're alright, you're alright Take off my clothes, oh bless me father Don't ask me why, you're alright, you're alright Okay, so normally you can predict a song's crossover potential in the United States by the UK or Canada getting the song first. And yet, this song strangely seems to have made no traction on either chart. It's gone to number one in four countries across Europe, and yet it hasn't picked up greater momentum elsewhere. And trust me, when you've seen what's bubbling up just beneath the Hot 100, you'd be praying for a song like this, because it's easily one of the most sleek and potent surefire smashes I've heard in a long time. First, a little bit of background. Amani is a French pop artist who made a pretty solid splash five years ago with her debut album, but it was a splash that didn't quite leave Europe. And even this track took a well-timed remix to blow after getting released last year, but I'm so thrilled it did. The sandy tropical percussion plays well off against the tight low synth and the sharp beat, and that horn-like melody between verses really does stick in your head pretty well. But Amani is the real star here, underplaying her lower range to intensify the sensuality that comes as the mix drops out to get let her just command it. Sure, the lyrics aren't more than a set of directions to just get naked and make love but with that slight trembling warble in Imani's vocals, it feels all the more intense. You don't need more than that. So yeah, this song absolutely rules. Please let it cross over to the States. We could really use some quality right now. And on that note, our new arrivals, starting off with number 97, Chill Bill by Rob Stone featuring Jay Davis and Spooks. So, another week on Billboard Breakdown, another mediocre, interchangeable, soon-to-be-forgotten trap manger. Except this time, there might actually be something here. Of course, the most obvious component is that whistle, originally sampled from a 1968 film score composed by Bernard Herrmann, who worked with Hitchcock, and that sample was done by Tarantino for Kill Bill, before being resampled by dozens of other people. And really, that whistle does make the song stick in the brain probably more than any of the three rappers or the bog-standard trap beat does. Now, that's not saying that San Diego rapper Rob Stone or his posse are precisely bad. Their bars at least connect. I appreciate the references of ditching lean for weed, even if Jay Davis doesn't really follow suit with it, and Spooks easily steals the show with his most well-connected bars, but overall, it feels a little bit maybe too low-key to really catch on or go further. I'd definitely take this over the most of the terrible hip-hop we got clogging up the radio right now, but not by much. Number 96, Starving by Haley Steinfeld and Gray featuring Zach. a while since we've heard from Haley Steinfeld, but I'm not surprised by that. Love Myself dropped last year into a summer overloaded with self-esteem anthems, and while I'd probably take it over Rachel Platten's fight song, it still warmed my nerves that I didn't really miss it. And when Rock Bottom with DNCE lived up to its title and didn't even make the Hot 100 after the first re-release of her debut EP, she re-released the EP for a second time about a month ago with this new song, featuring Zed for the remix. And while the name might get the song more traction, I can't say that Zed's contributions make the song anything close to good. We get a decent liquid guitar line anchoring the melody against the fragmented edges of the percussion that actually feels brighter than any emotion that Steinfeld's bringing to the table, but then we get the pitch shifted post-chorus with the choppy synth and the strings and the song just completely loses any impact for me. It's garish, it doesn't remotely fit this sort of song about young love, and if Steinfeld was capable of emoting more, it wouldn't be here. It's not precisely a bad track, but yeah. Definitely not good either. Number 84, Holy Key by DJ Khaled, featuring Big Sean, Kendrick Lamar, and Betty Rice.
You know, of all the DJ Khaled songs to break after Major Key, this is the best thus far by a mile. The blurry guitars, they don't really have the depth to mesh well with a thinner trap beat, and no, I don't really like Big Sean, but I will admit his verse is much better than average, even if there are moments of clumsiness as he tries to get more conscious, and a few ridiculous bars as he tries to prolong his life, he even says he's gonna get vegan for that. But the second that Betty Wright brings in her full-throated powerhouse of a voice to play lead into Kendrick Lamar, look, it's like what happened with Control three years ago. They aren't even in the same ballpark here. Kendrick's verse is layered, ridiculously well-crafted, and while it features his constant struggle between spiritual transcendence and a world that would seek to drag him back, especially the music industry that would try to contort his message, the sentiment is that Kendrick, if he wants to rule hip-hop, he will remain trapped in that matrix. It's a pretty powerful dichotomy there. Yeah, the song was solid back when I covered it last week when I reviewed Major Key. It's just as solid now. Perhaps just not the most pop-ready track, and I don't expect it to stick around if Do You Mind starts picking up any traction. It's in the bubbling under. It might show up. But you know what? I'll definitely enjoy this while it's here. I'll take it. Number 29, Setting the World on Fire by Kenny Chesney featuring Pink. You know, it doesn't happen often, but I miss the days when country music could cross over into the pop charts without needing to compromise. Of course, the stuff that always got the biggest was the most accessible material, but the unnatural bubble of bro country in 2013 gave the genre a taste of mainstream success that they've been increasingly desperate to recapture. Thankfully, there's a rising tide of artists who have stood against that, but on the flip side, the newest gimmick that mainstream acts are trying in country is to collaborate, rope in a pop or a hip-hop collaboration and get even higher. After all, it worked for Cruz, didn't it? Now, to be fair, there are some crossovers that kind of work. Despite some sloppy mixing, that Brad Paisley and Demi Lovato collaboration without a fight, it's got some potential. And Pink's even closer to country than Demi is, though through that folk project she did with City and Color, You Plus Me. Unfortunately, Kenny Chesney is following the path of Keith Urban to complete pop rock sellout with a heavier drum machine and the droopy sense. And you can tell that Pink does not remotely care about this song, even though she probably deserves more than the billing she has as she handles the majority of the choruses. Yeah, the guitars and the hook have a little bit of muscle that has potential to rise to a soaring chorus, but nothing that actually happens in the song or either of their deliveries match it. They're getting drunk, high, and rowdy. That's not exactly what material will set the world on fire. But at the end of the day, I can't hate this. It's passable, I guess, but only barely. And again, Pink is capable of so much better. And finally, number nine, Closer by the Chainsmokers featuring Halsey. That tattoo on your shoulder Pull the sheets right off the corner Of the mattress that you stole From your roommate back in Boulder We ain't never getting older has been a really good year for the chain smokers on the charts, with this song being their third top 10 hit. But they're also developing a bit of reputation for taking otherwise disposable pop artists and getting better than expected performances out of them. Roses would not have gotten any traction on the radio without her titular track, and Don't Let Me Down was easily the best thing that Dea has ever done. So now the chain smokers are taking on an even bigger challenge, Halsey who only becomes interesting when her songs are atrocious. She is behind that absolutely humiliating disaster of a song, New Americana, which remains one of the worst written songs I've ever covered on Billboard Breakdown. In other words, the Chainsmokers, they had their work cut out for them. And yet, I'm not sure that Halsey would need to be the issue here. She's a non-presence on this song as the Chainsmokers themselves decided to sit up in front of the microphone. And man, I'm not sure this was a good idea. Well, it's because Andrew Taggart's vocals are just as thin, especially when they layer in the falsetto over the main chord it just gets really shrill. Not helped at all by that oily synth tone that repeats the same melody line from the cushion of chimes, snaps, and cymbal heavy percussion. Yeah, the piano playing counter melody, it's pretty, but I really want to dig into the lyrics here, because there's a fair bit going on as this is intended as a song for a hookup with an ex that you run into randomly at a hotel bar. And there have been plenty of songs that kind of play in this territory, but midway through the track, you get the feeling that the Chainsmokers are also trying to wedge in some social comedy.
commentary about spoiled girls faking the broke college life along the lines of what Pulp did 20 years ago while undid it a lot better with common people. But the framing is what completely throws this song out of whack for me. It's a song where the hook is trying to recapture that moment in time where they thought that they could live forever, but every single detail around it is needling this girl with how inauthentic and spoiled that she is. And worse still, she's taking all of it because she was the insane one for leaving this guy. And for as much as the writers say that they were intending for a vaguely comedic tone as they realize all the reasons why they broke up in the first place, well, just like Selfie, there's no punchline here. There's no deeper insight. And it said Rings is the sort of the revenge fantasy about getting dumped by a rich girl in college when she just crumbs crawling back years later. And you know what? There's a place for those sort of songs. Avril Lavigne's Skater Boy is easily the biggest example. But though I throw in Lone Star by Laurie McKenna, but adding in Halsey in, it undercuts the vicious catharsis and just feels kind of misaligned. In short, I appreciate what this song is trying to do, but man, there's a lot of miscalculation here. In other words, shouldn't be any surprise that Closer by the Chainsmokers featuring Halsey lands the worst of the week. Although, I would say that it's less bad more than just kind of confused. Trying for something that's more complex and really missing the landing. As to the best, Hell, that's easy. Holy Key by DJ Khaled featuring Big Sean, Kendrick Lamar, and Betty Wright. Although the world hit is a real tempting option too. It's really close there. Overall, not really a bad week, but as things go forward, I get the feeling that, as I said, anything could happen. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.